Hello and welcome to Tripods Trap House. I'm your host, Nathan Bressel. Here with me today are my two regulars at this point, Cooper and TJ. Um, yeah, we're a week away from another Dallas show. It's come a little bit quicker this time. Um, usually the show is every other month, so we're about three weeks earlier than we usually are for the Dallas show, so it's kind of nice. I personally have not been in cards as much the last two or three weeks as I would want to, just because I've been busy um, getting ready for my grad program to start and starting a new job, but hopefully this week and then the next couple weeks we'll have some shows coming up um, that we can get back kind of in the swing of things. So kind of wanted to start off with our regular Dallas chatter, what's going to be hot, expectations, different things like that. So um, I guess we'll jump right in on expectations for this Dallas show compared to other ones we've been to. Either one of y'all can start. Yeah. Um, so what's going to be hot? I think football's going to be hot again. I mean, at that point, we're going to be a week before the season, if not like right on top of it. My dates check out. That's not right. Yeah. First regular season game is like 10 days after Dallas. Um, whatever it is, it's, football will be hot. I have a strong feeling of that. A lot of people are going to be looking to move their football, so I'm curious to see how much of football will be moving because it seems like there's going to be a plentiful amount like always. Um, personally, I'm going to be looking to find some basketball plays. I feel like there are many parallels to be drawn with football right now and how it's being really hyped up with certain people, and I feel like basketball is going to see the same type of market change. Definitely going to be looking at that kind of stuff and then just kind of normal stuff for flips, value boxing, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, so for... What goes through my head when you say that is, as far as football goes, I believe it'll still be hot because it's the main thing that is in the news right now and that's being hyped up. But then again, my main question in my head with football is when is that supply and demand going to drop? When is that demand for buying football going to start to go down as we see the season come closer and people's investments of crappy quarterbacks (laughs) flush down the toilet? Yeah. Um, that's going to be my big thing is, you know, when does that, when does that demand hit, hit the bottom? You know, when, yeah. when do people just get caught holding their big football cards that they can't move anymore? Because mm-hmm. let's say Josh Allen starts 0 and, 0 and 3. Okay. Yeah. Like. I say like five, yeah. like five weeks into the season. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's just one of those things to where like, for me, I'm not, but I told you this earlier, I'm, I will not be looking for football unless it's like a deal that I just cannot turn down or it's just little stuff that'll be flips, you know, turning $5 into $10 and stuff like that. The high end football stuff for me is just not, not smart right now. In my opinion, in terms of cash and just like cashing out or like buying things, I feel like now is a good time to sell football unless you're just like so surefire on a guy that he's going to like go out and go crazy. I feel like now is the time to kind of get your guaranteed one liquidity and two like profit without having to take a gamble, okay, an ACL here, a broken collarbone there, you know, and even also performance. Like, I feel like now is a good time to get guaranteed movement and uh, transition your inventory into something else or into cash. Yeah, I 100% agree with that. Football's just too risky. We've talked about that before. This this is the one show that I'm, like, like, that's all, like, all I'm going to be trying to do is, like, not all I'm going to be trying to do, but I'm going to be trying to move every single football card that I have. Yeah. I might keep a couple Joe Burrow cards just because I like him, but, like, most of my football I'm just going to try to get rid of. Yeah, and, like, even with bigger guys that are still young and prospecting, like, for example, Justin Herbert, like, he's obviously the guy from that class. But the thing with Justin Herbert is, one, he's in a pretty tough division. Like, I don't see him beating the Chiefs in the next no, three years. No. Two, like, his expectations are already so high that the dude's literally going to have to have a runaway MVP season for his prices to to even, like, see an uptake in my opinion like they're gonna have to go like 11 and like 6 12 and 5 like sure. have a really good year for them to even do anything same thing with burrow like he's in a tough division he just got hurt he's probably in the toughest division in football in my opinion yeah. like the brown steelers ravens that's tough um he just came back he doesn't have a no line like i love joe burrow i think he'll have a great career just it's just scary yeah you know um I, I feel like, and this might be kind of a hot take, but I feel like Joe Burrow cards are going to be more liquid now than they might ever be, unless he becomes like an all timer, mm-hmm. or like at least until next NFL preseason. So you think this is like the best time to move Joe Burrow? I think it's the best time to move. I think it's any best, quarterback. I, mean, I I personally, other with the exception of Mahomes and Brady, and then obviously like Hall of Fame type guys that don't play anymore, 
I will not be holding any of that yeah. stuff going in. Just the yeah. expectations and like the the hype. That's what this 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 whole industry is about hype. Just the hype right now for anybody good that's anywhere close. Like Jalen Hurts, like okay, he's on the Eagles. They're probably a third team in the division type guy. Like I love Jalen Hurts as a competitor and as a player, but like, do I see Jalen Hurts' cards in the next six months being any higher than they are right now? And I would say no. I don't see it. So I agree. I I personally I've always been a basketball guy. Um, we've talked about this. I would rather have high end basketball um, rather than high end football, unless it's the safe play like Tom Brady, which I I'm not a huge Tom Brady fan just because he went to Michigan. <laughs> um, but obviously, him being great and stuff. Obviously, a lot of his his stuff is is good. And I've talked. We've talked about SGC plays with you know cheap bucks brady sure. parallels and stuff like that and stuff like that but you know um just that type of stuff as long as if you're investing in football like we've talked about this before obviously the goats are the best flipping is for the quarterbacks you know take take your money you know take your 20 percent and go um that's kind of my strategy at this point i uh i kind of think kind of think it boils down to a point of like zig while others zag or zag while others zig however it goes um all the eyes are on football right now i feel like um, and basketball and, and ba- even baseball is being completely, completely not ignored, but just like they're so low in comparison to what they were. And even, even though it's a new market now, I feel like they're still yeah. low. Think, think about like, I, I yeah. genuinely believe like, say, say I come across and this is just a, this is just a good card to compare off of. Like, say I find like a Zion silver PSA 10 and I can get that at, you know, say 80% of comps. I feel like whenever I de- decide to sell that, I'm probably going to make like a 40% margin. Yeah. Like Kevin um, Durant autographs. Like, why are those so cheap? Yeah, and, like, yeah, and just going off of, like, doing, being one step ahead of where everyone else is at, that's what I always try and do, and I feel like I did pretty successful with that, because my Luca Ruby Wave now has a new comp, which is 3K, and I paid 1.8 for it a month ago, so I'm pretty happy about that, but also, I talked to both of y'all about this, I think I texted Cooper about it first, Ronald Acuna, I love it, is so cheap right now. And he's a top three player in baseball for the next 10 years. If I see a decent Acuna, I might have to make a play. Yeah, I I, I was talking to you about buying another, because obviously I had a Refractor 10, what, like the January show I bought Mm. one. I bought it for like 400, 450. And they were up to like what, nine, eight? Yeah. And now they're back down to like 425? I ended up selling mine for 750. What are they at right now? I don't even know. Last comp I saw was like 410. And that was like five days ago. With with the exception of the preseason baseball where like Acuna and Soto 10s got up to like near the 250 to 300 range. Like I feel like that was a little unsustainable. But other than that, I feel like baseball is yet to pop. I don't, I'm don't. i not mm-hmm. saying it's going to. But I do feel like even during those times when baseball wasn't super high, the Acuna bat down was one of the highest cards out there. And at this point, if you look at it in comparison, it's just so low. And yeah. I feel like that could go down as one of those iconic. Like if he be, if he becomes what we all think he will be, mm-hmm. I feel like that'll be one of those iconic ones. Yeah, maybe, maybe and premier one. And just that, like with the hype around Otani this year too, the dude's obviously the MVP front runner. You know, with a sub three ERA and he's got forty home runs. Like, but his cards have gone down because yeah. he hasn't been hitting home runs like he was before the All Star break. And the other thing about Otani too is, the Angels are more than likely not making the postseason, which sucks because they have probably the two most exciting players in the league with trout and otani but i wouldn't even look at otani cards right now just because i mean even though they are a little bit cheaper than they were over the next what's gonna, what's six gonna month period what's gonna make they're not up? gonna go up like he's not in the postseason sure he may win mvp but like Jokic cards didn't really go up when he won the mvp like like who cares like, like yeah he's not playing anymore. i feel like just because we already know otani's gonna win mvp like it or we're pre- pretty sure. I don't think it's going to make his cards go up that much. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a notion that people make. They're like, oh, yeah, whenever so and so gets the MP, they're going to go up. It's already a fact. Yeah. It's already a fact. Like, yeah. no- nothing like, new happens. Jokic and Embiid were the top two guys for like, NBA. And, like, okay, cool. I, like, I feel like the only thing that could happen to for Otani's prices to get higher than they once were was if he went on through a no hitter or, like, yeah. hit like a four home run game or hit for the cycle or something. Like, even that, I don't know. But. Or they just miraculously made the wild card game and then like swept through the playoffs. Yeah. I don't even know. They, they throw him game one. He goes, he yeah, goes like, CG shut out. That would make his cards go up, but I don't see yeah, that. Yeah, like it's just going to take a lot. And that's why, like, 
when we're talking about one step ahead, that's why I feel like Acuna is down right now. So Acuna would be a play for my baseball. Um, you know, I just feel like basketball is still pretty low, but people are starting to kind of creep back into it. Um, I feel like Trey Young is still stupid cheap, mm -hmm. and it's insane to me how cheap he is. Um, Luca is obviously like if you look at Luca and Trey's prices, like Trey on some of the cards is like a fourth of the price Luca is. Like a Trey Ruby Wave ten is like twelve hundred, and then the last Luca did three. It's like that's insane to me. Yeah, it is. So I just feel like Trey's stupid, stupid cheap. Um, and like he's on a good team too. Like yeah, like they'll be around. Like they are. They are a bunch of young, athletic guys who can who can jump out the gym and play. Like yeah. they're, they're legit. They'll be around. Like yeah. oh yeah. I think Trey is a play for me. Obviously, I still have that Luca, so I'd like to trade into a Luca or cash out on that Luca and you know do something else with it. I feel like Giannis could be a play just because you know no one's really talking about him anymore. Um, I mean, even though he is coming off a championship, like I feel like his select base tens and like. Cheap. Just cheap stuff. Go buy back your autograph. <laughs> Go buy back the same card. <laughs> That'd be funny. You know, Giannis's cards. Th th I mean, they saw a slight, like they saw a jump after he won the finals. I mean, he had a great game and all, but they didn't jump like I thought they would. No. Yeah, I want to say his base. It's the same thing up. with what happened with LeBron last year. His his base tens got up to like three k. Yeah. Which is obviously a lot of money, but yeah, but like compared to same thing happened with LeBron. Like he won the championship. Everyone was like, "Oh, LeBron's gonna win. I'm gonna sell." And like. No one was buying no, it. No, literally, so, nobody wanted to buy LeBron. Like, so it's, it's just one of those things where like, you have to sell, and that's why I'm talking about when we're talking about with football, is you have to sell while people still want to buy it. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because, you know, four weeks from now, Jalen Hurts Prism Silver Autos could go from three hundred to sixty five dollars really quick, mm -hmm. really really quick. I agree. So. If he gets benched or something, like Joe Flacco's the starter. And yeah, stuff, so like, tank. if he gets benched, like, the Eagles start 0-4, you know, Devonta Smith gets hurt, whatever it yeah. is, you know. Just, football is just too, too, too many factors. Too many guys. Even even it boils down to the injury game. Like, in basketball, you don't want to invest into an injury-prone, injury prone, quote-unquote, player. Like, with football, there's always potential of that. And that's not something yeah. I want to invest my cash into. You could be a practice squad guy, get called up, first play on special teams, you get hurt. Yeah. Like. Yeah, totally. So, any last thoughts on Dallas expectations? What's going to be hot? What do you, any, anything like that? Yeah, I want to talk about something. Sure. Um, so, and we've had a chat about this several times already, and I've already mentioned already, but drawing parallels to football now versus basketball here in a little bit, like kind of trying to target guys that are going to be buys going into the basketball season, kind of based off of what's selling right now for football. So, for example, like the guys that are money right now are Josh Allen, Baker Mayfield, Lamar. Did I say Kyler Murray? Kyler, Kyler Murray, um, Burrow, Herbert. Several others. I'm, I'm mainly going to target those four because they, they, they're just doing really well. And I feel like there's a lot more speculation with those two that you just mentioned. Yeah. Kind of trying to find guys that I could parallel to the basketball market, such as like guys that are established and have been around for a few years and aren't necessarily rolling the dice. We talked about Tatum. That's kind of the main one for me. I was curious to know if you guys had any that were similar to that. Yeah. Um, I like Tatum a lot going into the year. I like Donovan Mitchell. It's just the Jazz aren't really exciting, and the West is tough. I like De'Aaron Fox a lot. Mm -hmm. I think he's he due for a breakout traded. year. I, I like De'Aaron Fox. De'Aaron Fox and Shea are my two favorites. Yeah, I just picked up a De'Aaron Fox silver rookie from Prism. Got it for a little bit less than the last comp, but I think it'll go up so I can make some money off of it. Is it slapped or no? No, it's oh. just raw, but it's centered well. Um. Sweet. So I like De'Aaron a lot. Um, I've always liked Donovan Mitchell. Been a big fan of his game. I like Damian Lillard a lot. I love Dame's game. He's just he's so good. He's so freaking stupid. He's a killer. Yeah. Um, but as far as guys, yeah, I I've never said this before, but I would like to get a nice Zion, like yeah. a, like an over a thousand dollars Zion. Yeah. I feel like just the hype of his stuff is gonna go up during the season, um, before the season, just because he's one of those he's he's one of the guys when you think of basketball cards. Yeah. I feel like in terms of Zion cards, it's he's almost borderline hard to get into because you kind of want to get the, the nice prism or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I honestly feel like that's not a play because the numbered stuff goes for so much. Mm -hmm. And then the like the lesser like numerical value, like money value, is super high pop. 
Yep. So at that point, you kind of look at, like, like cards that I'm looking at of his are, like, select RPAs and, like, Panini 1 RPAs. Yeah. Because, like, it's going to be limited. I mean, granted, he has tons of autos, so, like, it's going to be limited. I, I feel like that's a perfect middle between pop numbers and then it's not necessarily the hardest thing yeah. in the world to get into. I've been looking at his Ruby Waves, Purple Waves from uh, Prism, his Optic, like, Blue Velocities. Um, What's his Purple Wave go for in a gem? Mm, I'd say like around twelve to fifteen. See, that's not bad. Yeah, like, that's not bad at all. Like his green, like his green PSA tens go for uh, like nine hundred, which I feel like is decently cheap. Yeah, because they're only like a pop four hundred. Yeah, that's pretty good. So that's really good. Um, but and then for select, like his premier level stuff, like scopes, um, hybrid parallels, like different things like that, especially with select because it's still hobby his year select as a play and then his autos obviously yeah his autos are real like not affordable necessarily like to everybody but just in terms of like in comparison mm-hmm. that, and that even if you play. wanted to move that like what dealer wouldn't be interested in no zion exactly auto, like you know yeah. what i mean <laughs> that, that, that was what i was gonna say is like i i would feel getting into zion i'd be confident just because he's really he moves super easy yeah not many things move easier than like a zion silver 10 i feel like yeah so you're still on shea course what else uh that's about it right now i'm sure i'm sure i'll pick something sure i'll pick something else up every single card i own is (laughs) shay and matt ryan no i don't have that i don't have that card anymore i i flipped that for 2x actually really yeah everybody give it up for cooper making a play out of boy yeah Yeah. yes sir speaking of shay i have a couple of Shea rookie autos here that I'll be ringing to the OKC show. Oh, plug. If you're in the OKC area, OKC card show is September 11th weekend. 11th weekend. I I'll be set up. Friday, I have a table. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Yeah, I'll be there all three days. I have a table. Cooper's got a table right next to me. Come say hey. You know, you know the vibes. I got the deals. So I got I got the good good. So TJ will be there trying to get some deals off me and I'll be like, no, TJ, come back Sunday. Um, <laughs> so, I'm literally, so. I won't ignore you guys. I'll say hi. I ain't going to look at your table until Sunday. Yeah, no. <laughs> with all due respect. <laughs> and that's totally fine with me because I'm not going to give you a deal. <laughs> so come see us. Um, but yeah, next topic I really wanted to get into after Dallas was the recent news. That's probably the biggest news sports cards has seen to date, um, which is the fanatics situation going on so if you haven't heard here's a quick summary fanatics basically has agreed with the mlbpa which is the players association that they will take over the licensing rights for mlb in 2026 once the tops contract is over so basically tops will not be able to make baseball cards starting in 2026 once that contract ends fanatics will have that license how this goes about is still to be determined and then we've also seen they obviously have five years to kind of get a plan ready and a business model ready Um, But Fanatics also is wanting to pair up with the NFL PA and the NBA PA to have a three, have all three major sports under Fanatics, which to me. That would be insane. Would be insane. And it sounds like a monopoly and I don't know how I feel about it. So I'd like to kind of talk about that and your initial thoughts on the news. I I, I could see, I could see that happening. I could too, but. The original news about just like talk, like. I I, honest, I didn't even know what it meant at first. You sent it to me the other day, and I was like, I was like, wait, so does that mean Tops is just like done?" And I was like, "Yeah, I mean, um, that mean like they can make like, like are they just gonna be Star Wars Are they, are cars they just gonna be like a like an upper deck type like where they just make like yeah like what are they gonna make soccer and gonna say that's why soccer, that's they're gonna that's make what I'm lacrosse. saying yeah like no one has like, any like, idea what's gonna happen because Fanatics one has never made a trading card two like are they just gonna make like their own prism, their own national oh. treasures. Like, yeah, what's gonna yeah, what's gonna happen? It's interesting because, like, you see, like, I mean, Fanatics does have products, like card products, like the Optic Waves. I forget what it's called. Like, yeah, but like, I, Fanatics doesn't make no, the no, card. No, what I'm saying is like, they have like their foot in the door. Yeah, yeah, but it's like, but I, I, I feel like that's just like a like a like the Walmart exclusive that used to have. In the no, that's what I'm saying. That's like, what I'm saying. Like, like they have baseline knowledge. It's just one of those things where like. Is it, is it going to be a buyout opportunity? Yeah. Here's here's what I was talking to Cooper and you guys about, but I'll fill in everybody else. What I think happened, and I think we all could somewhat agree to this theory, oh, is yeah, that we were talking about. they basically, <laughs> Fanatics basically went to Tops and was like, hey, we want to buy you out and just go ahead and buy your company. And if you didn't know, Tops was planning on going public here in the next six months or so. So they probably said, 
nah, screw off. We're going to do our thing. Yeah. And then Fanatics was like, okay, we'll just go to the MLBPA and just take away your license for more money. So that's what I think happened. And they just said, screw you, Tops. Yeah. Um, now your company's worth like nine times less than it was like three days ago. Did you see that the thing about going public got severed? Mm-hmm. Like they, they can't, they're like, so I'm not going to act like I know how this works because I absolutely don't. But basically they were set to go public with something. I don't know if it's a company or like an organization. But now this fanatics news, that's no longer. Like that deal has been cut oh, off. Oh, yeah. Why, why would – who's going who's gonna to invest in a company that's going to be like, dead in five like, years? Yeah. It is big news though because it's like they're not even going to wait and feel it out and see if Tops gets bought out. Like, no, like, like screw you. <laughs> no, like yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like if they're not going to have the license in five years, Tops basically – like I just said, their company has gone significantly down in monetary value. Yeah, because oh, yeah. one, who's going to want to buy stock of a company that they know is not going to exist in five years? Like like – it just yeah. doesn't make sense. Now, you know what that would be like? That would be buy, like buying Andrew Love cards knowing he was going to retire. That's like, the that's, like <laughs> that's like investing in Walmart and then seven-eighths of the product that Walmart has in store no longer are in Walmarts. Yeah. yeah. Like why? Like why? I don't know who that is. I'm just kidding. Okay, whatever. But um, that's what I'm saying. Like it's just like why would you do that? So basically yeah. Fanatics is a god because they just literally said screw you tops and was like – we we'll just go straight to the source. You know, it's worth eighteen billion now. Yeah, they're if, a freaking if, billion. Like they're, they're crazy. If they're able to like put Panini out of business, like like I, I like I can't even see that happening because I feel like Panini's like so powerful. But like I could see it happening. It'll be like, interesting to see what kind of business model they come up with because the guys that are in it, it's Josh something. I don't know his name, but he's been in cards for a while. That and he's headed up and he's got connections to Gary Vee and stuff like this. But like. It'll be interesting interesting to see what kind of business model they make up because like I said, Tops has never or Tops. Fanatics has never made a trading card. Not that they don't know how, but do they buy out Tops and Panini and just have those guys start making the cards under Fanatics? Do they just say, We're gonna do our own thing, but we have the licenses now, so screw you guys? Do they you know, like there's so many different variables and questions that I have that like no one's gonna know. Yeah. No one knows. Like and they, it kind of like, pisses me like, off. Like they could yeah. like, like if they really wanted to. They could buy. They could get the license for all three sports and then just put out like one product a year. Like that's what I'm they have the license. It becomes a monopoly when all three are under that one because mm-hmm. they can do whatever the heck they want to do. Mm-hmm. Like they run everything. Everything comes through them, which is not good. You know, I just thought of this is pretty unrelated. Not good. I feel like if this happened, or like when it happens, I feel like the F one market's gonna get stronger. <laughs> it's gonna be like one of like three products tops can come out. To, yeah, they'll have tops Chrome Soccer. Yeah, which Panini so could they're. Panini. They're gonna have they're gonna have Fanatics. Inception F one, Finest F one, all of it, and they'll have like what Star Wars and like Walking Dead, Star and, Wars, yeah. and WWE, Star Wars. WWE, WWE. WWE. Yeah. Triple Thread Star Wars. Let's get it. <laughs> it's crazy. I don't know. It's just interesting to see what's gonna happen. Like no one really knows anything about it. Just that that's the announcement. Apparently it was leaked. We weren't supposed to know this. That's crazy. So um, apparently well, it was leaked. Um, but it's going to be interesting to see what happens. But I I strongly feel this is the biggest sports card news that's happened to date I, so far. I don't understand why two companies can't have the license like it used to be. I don't know either, honestly. That's a great question. Because for so long, like... Upper Deck and Tops made baseball cards and basketball. and, and Yeah, and Tops and Panini were making basketball at the same time, like... I don't know. That's a good question. If that's like a lawsuit thing now, or I don't know why they do that. Would it not be more profitable for MLB, NBA, whatever, to give out the license to multiple companies? Yeah, exactly. You would that, think. That, that's why like, I don't understand. I don't know. We'd have, maybe we have to do some research on I that. I don't know. Maybe it's a bigger deal because they're exclusive. Hey, all I'm yeah. asking is if Fanatics takes over Panini, no Panini points, all right, <laughs> oh, or, or no yeah. points, and give me my redemptions. <laughs> listen, listen to this. So... Fanatics with all their memorabilia and authentication business they have. I know exactly Bro, what you're to say. Bro, literally, like, all these patches and stuff, like, hopefully they're game-worn and not like, hey, this patch was worn by this guy for 2.3 seconds at a photo shoot and taken off. Like, I, unre- hopefully. Yeah, unrelated but related. Something that would be super cool that I would love to see out of Fanatics that I read on Twitter the other day. I don't, I don't know who wrote it, but Redemptions for, like, memorabilia. Like yeah. you just hit a full authentic S- signed jersey. Of yeah, like you, yeah, you just hit a Tom Brady sign speed helmet. Yeah, like, you just hit be... a DK Metcalf 
game used jersey from September thirteenth preseason game yeah. or whatever. That'd be cool if it was like you just hit a uh football from Peyton Manning's fifty fifth touchdown pass yeah. in twenty thirteen. Like yeah. that'd be You dope. know how Leaf does those um Leaf Ultimate Jumbo memorabilia boxes and some breakers mm-hmm. do breaks of yeah. that? That'd be kinda cool to have like redemptions of like, that. Like Nathan would collect every Dwayne Haskins jock strap out there. <laughs> No, Justin Fields and J.K. Dobbins, okay. actually. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, that'd be kind of crazy. Yeah, right? no, like, I could totally see that being a thing. Like, they have the capabilities. Like, they make good money on that stuff. They could toss in a number to 10 or something, like Mahomes. Helmet. Yeah, yeah like, helmet. Like, they've got a Zion. They've got Zion under a deal. Like, Zion basketball. Like, bro. Be so I, I would wonder how much they would do that because it would be expensive to ship all of that and stuff. But, I mean, mm-hmm. you see. if they own all three, I was like, going to say, they'd be cares. making more than enough money, though. Yeah, for like, sure. And how how would that be for a, for an advertiser on the side of a blaster box? Hit redemptions. Look for, for blaster exclusive helmets. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Seriously, like yeah. That'd be crazy. That'd be crazy. But next topic we can talk about as we wrap up the episode a little bit. Um, Want to talk a little bit about NFL preseason, um, and just kind of the the key guys that at least people are watching right now. I feel like Jacob Eason is probably one of the top guys that people are watching right now. Um, his first game that I saw, he did pretty good. Um, and then the second game a couple days ago that I watched, he was not as good. Um, he's the thing with Eason is that the dude's got such a strong arm that he just rockets every single ball. And not that like the receivers aren't doing their job by catching it, but like, Sometimes he just yeah. he needs to learn how to throw. Like, like when you tell like a pitcher in baseball, throw, you hey, don't you don't have to chunk everything. Yeah. You can you need to learn how to pitch. Like he mm-hmm. needs to learn how to just throw. Like not like, just like, like 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 the receiver's wide open. You don't have to throw eighty miles an hour. Yeah, like just get it in the spot where it needs to go. Um, that's the big thing that I saw with Eason. But so far he looks comfortable in the offense. Sam Ellinger had a great game as well. Um, We're bad. Yeah, well, they're bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little too late. <laughs> um, but Sam Ellinger had a good game. From what I've seen of Justin Fields, his first game was – he started off slow. The offensive line had a lot of penalties. Um, but he wasn't – you know, it's his first NFL game. You're not expecting him to be crazy. But he got more comfortable into the game, and he started looking like the Justin Fields that I know at Ohio State. He had a couple t- uh, throwing touchdowns, went like 70% completion. So was doing regular Justin Fields things. Um, doesn't matter. This is Andy Dalton's time. Andy Dalton's time? Yeah. Andy Dalton's time. Tell that to... Uh, it's negligible. Justin matter. Fields is going to have a great career, but right now it's Andy Dalton's time. Okay. <laughs> that quote from him was so As stupid. In, I mean, what do you expect games. him to say? Like, the media, like, oh, yeah, Justin Fields, yeah. yeah. That's our star. Like, that's our guy. Yeah, like... <laughs> I don't know. But, yeah, Justin Fields has looked good. I haven't really paid attention to any other guys. I, I've, I haven't even really watched any preseason. I've, like, looked at like looked at stats from a couple games, but... I, I haven't really been paying too much attention to it. Yeah, I'm trying to think of anybody else that I've really seen that stood out. Um, Not Tim Tebow. Didn't Zach? (laughs) Yeah, Tim Tebow got cut. Didn't Zach Wilson have a decent game the other day? I don't know, but Mac Jones has looked good. Really? Yeah, he's looked good. Cam Newton's also looked great. Yeah, like great, great. Yeah, that'd be interesting. But everybody thinks that Mac Jones is probably better. Speaking of guys that have had great camps, CD Lamb is going off. He's my boy. CD Lamb. It's gonna be a superstar in this league. I tell you, hundred right hundred catch season inbound question Justin, mark. Justin or not Justin, CD Lamb, I think will end up being the best receiver from the class, and I think CD Lamb will easily make the Pro Bowl this oh, year. I think he's a top five receiver. Better in the league than this Justin year. Jefferson? Yes, one hundred percent. Clip it. You're in about a year. Come we'll back see. in January. Come back when I have CD Lamb back. in every fantasy league that I'm in. <laughs> come back and I win CD, every come single come league. Come back when CD Lamb's in the Hall of Fame. All right. Hey, he wears number 88 for the for the Dallas Cowboys, all right? He's got something going. That's a good number to wear, yeah. 88. Des Bryant, Michael Irvin, Drew Pearson, like anyone good that's ever played on the Cowboys has worn that number. <laughs> I did not know that, actually. Yeah. I that it's Michael today. Irvin's number. He asked Michael Irvin if he could wear it before he, he got the number. For real? Yeah. Well, if the number's available, I'm taking it. I'm not asking. Like, <laughs> <fuck>. <laughs> like it's yeah. retired. CD well, Lamb's guy. Y'all hear that when Carson Wentz got traded or traded or signed by Philly, that Michael Pittman wouldn't give him his number. <laughs> Did <laughs> he end up Pittman. giving it to him? No, I hope not. No. no. So what number does he wear now? Like number nine I have or no something? Yeah, I have no clue. That's crazy. Who cares? It's Carson Wentz, bro. Prove it. Prove that you're worth it. He, he's the third string right now at this point. Like Jacob Eason's coming, out, taking over. And Sammy. No, Jacob Eason wears number nine. 
So I don't know what number Carson Wentz wears. Maybe like number two? I don't know. Um, I'm trying to think of who else. Yeah, I've been watching Hard Knocks. I watched the first two episodes earlier. What team is it? I forgot. It's the Cowboys. What what is Hard Knocks? It's It's the like, like, it's like the it's, NFL it's doc like, that like follows around a It's a like franchise. an inside of the training camp basically. Yeah, yeah. you're right, number 2, Carson Wentz. Oh, let's go. Um, That's a lucky guess. It's like it's like Is like, it current Cowboys? Yeah, like That's they cool. put out a new episode every week. It's like being filmed thing. like right now, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. It's on HBO Max. I just downloaded it and subscribed to it. So it's like month. a reality TV show or what? It's like uncut like everything yeah. during training camp like Okay. Like they Behind have meetings, scenes. like they have people mic'd up on the bench, like during practice. That's cool. Yeah, yeah I haven't watched that. Wasn't it the Browns last year? I think I watched that. Yeah, I think it was the Browns. Either that or the year before. I think it was the Dolphins one year. I don't remember. But if you I'm, could if you could mic up any one player, who would it be? Mm, Unless you're like raw, like I choose Ray mm, Lewis. Marshawn Lynch. <laughs> <laughs> I choose Ray Lewis. I feel like the trash um, talk is insane. I feel like Tom Brady would be an interesting one to listen to. That would to. be. Marshawn Lynch. Just how, like, yeah. I just want to hear how he communicates. Or some, I'm trying to think of somebody that just gets, like, pissed. Like, like no filter. That like, has, like, anger issues. <laughs> Vontez Burfin. <laughs> <laughs> Ray, Ray Rice. <laughs> I was thinking that. Aaron Hernandez. <laughs> Aaron Hernandez. Oh, man. Now we're getting off topic. That's yeah. okay. But. What do, y'all, what do y'all think about the PWCC? Stuff. I think it's, it's hilarious. I think it's funny. oh with eBay. Yeah, I think it's funny. I think well, I Cooper I, sent it to me on Instagram and I was like, yeah, no shit. That <laughs> they, they're shield bidding. Bro, bro, there's shield bidding on every single account. Like, like I, I and I love the the thing that they put out after PWCC. They put out a, a newsletter that was like, uh, as far as we are aware, there's been no shield bidding. Oh, okay. oh, really? So all these accounts that have zero feedback and zero purchases are just. Random new guys that bidding on multi thousand dollar cards. You'll see like a card that's like buy it now, five hundred, and then a PWC auction at five thirty right next to it. It's like wasn't PWCC hmm. the account that had all those PSA ten Jordans listed, or was that Pro- that's Prostein? Oh, Pro- they had that lot okay. of. I didn't know if that was PWCC. No one's buying that lot. It's a ridiculous. No, it's, price. Just, it's just there. Yeah, it's just just on there. Just there to flex. Just to be there. It's probably, it's there to garner offers. They're probably, probably like Gary V's, bro. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> As we wrap up, let's talk about some cool pickups that we've all had recently. Anyone got any cool pickups that they've bought in the last month since we've talked? My Shea Prism from uh, TJ the other day. What is it? Red Fast Break Disco to 125. So what's the plan with it? You going to grade it? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to grade it. I have a lot of Shea cards I want to grade. I have a Ruby Wave that's clean, a couple silvers. I haven't picked much else up, to be honest. <laughs> I went to a show in Kansas City. And I bought the most random stuff possible. I didn't make any necessarily plays. Favorite card's probably a TJ Watt gold kaboom. Kaboom stuff is doing well. But like literally I I, I picked up a Trevor Lawrence auto. Yeah. I, I, I've, I've, I've bought a lot of stuff. I just, yeah. none of it. It's all the same stuff basically. I do a lot of my big buying in Dallas. Like on, I don't like buying online on eBay. But I bought the Daniel Cabrera, my PC, uh, Super Fractor from Bowman. Let's go. Um, Nathan sleeps with this card, by the way. No, I don't. Has him in a mag. <laughs> no, I don't. Every time he it's goes to work, he takes it to his forehead. So, <laughs> so I bought that. Um, what else have I bought lately? Oh, I bought a. Uh, I bought a LeBron James orange ice PSA ten. Nothing crazy, but like I feel like LeBron stuff like that is kind of cheap right now. So I bought that. Um, but yeah, nothing nothing real crazy. I've been doing a lot of selling, and like I said earlier, I've been kind of not doing as much card stuff as I've wanted to the last 10 days. Um, you said at the beginning of the uh, podcast, it seemed like the Dallas show had come quicker than normal. I feel like it's come slow. I feel oh like my gosh. It's literally five weeks. I know, I, I know, but I feel like it's usually I, I feel like I tell you every week, like, since the, because the, the last Dallas show is my favorite one by far. And oh, yeah. Since the last Same. Dallas show, I haven't been to a show, and I'm just like, I want to go to a show. Like, yeah. oh, every weekend, I'm like, bro, I want to go to another show. What? What move did did you make a big move in Dallas last time? Like I can't remember nah. what you got at all. No, nah. you just I, enjoyed it. Was it was just a bunch of random cheap stuff. I liked it because yeah. like the deals were there, but also the tra- the heavy traffic wasn't there, so I could actually yeah, move I, around and I, breathe. I was gonna talk. Yeah. Another question is: you, you guys think the attendance gonna be like back to normal? It'll be higher than normal, but not as high as it has been. No, it'll be better than last show, but I think it'll be like a second to last in terms of. I feel like population. out of this five that we've been to, it'll be like the fourth or third most attended. First like it won't be as low as last one, but we, it will be like right in the middle. We've gone every single one in twenty twenty one, right? Yeah. 
this the biggest show since the National? There was yes. that big East Coast well, show. Well, the Hoss, yeah, Hofstra. And, I, I don't Dells think, I don't think that was and the Dells. biggest. I don't think the East Coast one was the biggest. I saw some big cards come out of there. I think it was like 400 tables. I mean, still, like... That's around Dallas. Probably Dallas is probably a little bit more. Dallas is advertising a 700 for this show, but... No, no, no. No. Okay, let me look. Yeah. Yeah, it, I think it'll be a good show. I feel like a lot of the regulars will be there. I know that a lot of the Cali guys that are going to be there are com- are going to be back. That's good. Um, so I think it'll be a lot more not just the Midwest guys at this one that it was the last one, uh, just because people were wanting to save for travel. Um, but I feel like a lot of the regular guys that are on social media and stuff will be there. So yeah, I'm excited for the show. I've hit up my same ten guys I buy from the whole show, and all ten of them will be there. So yeah. Yep, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, for and sure. this is the first time that you and I, Nathan, are going to go all three yeah, days. Yeah, we'll be there all three days. We'll get in late Friday because I don't get off work. Nice. We'll be there for trade night Friday and Saturday night, and then we'll be leaving Sunday. We also have our fantasy draft Sunday night. When is that? It's at like 9. You still need to join the league. I was going to say, am I in the league? Or no, you haven't joined it yet. I'll do that after this. Okay. But that's the plan. Dallas, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I love it. I want to buy. I want to buy a bunch of value stuff for the OKC show, but I don't want to buy a bunch of stuff and then just like nuts, like not moving. Be able to move it. The, I mean, I can move. Cooper it buys the biggest one dollar box ever. Has one little kid buy like three cards. Well, bro. <laughs> well, no. Okay, if you're going to the OKC show, look through Nathan and I's value boxes. Bro. All right, I, I promise. I will, I will have the best. I value promise. Box there. I promise you will find. TJ's like stuff. licking his chops. I have good stuff, and I'm fair. And last time I set up at OKC, I was really pissed because no one looked through my box. Bro, yeah, nobody nobody looks through them. That was like, forever ago. It was in January. That was a long time ago. It's no one looked months. through my box. Hasn't it eight months since you set up at a show? Yeah. I think that was the last time. I've, been, I've just been selling. I'm pretty sure that... Online. I'm pretty sure... When was the last time? You set up in, like, April or May. Yeah. Uh, you set up at Owls. You set up at OKC in, like, May. Because it was right before I had oh, graduation. Oh, yeah, because he was facing... That way, yeah. And you had that Acuna. You were set up next to Dan, and you were in that. Oh, little yeah, okay, I remember that. That's yeah. right. That, that that's when I sold that Acuna. Yeah. Was that a good show for you? Yeah. Good. I'm excited. I feel like the OKC show is gonna be pretty solid. Yeah. Do we? I don't even know where it's at. It's at the hotel. It's at the normal okay, hotel. Cool. Good. We'll have it linked in the Facebook group if y'all are a part of that, and then I will probably post the flyer on my Instagram and my Twitter as well. So, be sure to check it out. Come buy some cards. Anybody have any last thoughts? Nope. I'm buying an Acuna. Yeah, so I think that's I my want guy. A bat down. I think that's my play. I want. I want, I want a numbered Chrome. <laughs> like a first Bowman number to four ninety nine. No, or, like, or like a Chrome rookie. Like of Acuna. Oh, not first Bowman, just like no. tops Chrome. Okay. Yeah. Auto or not? Uh, I mean, I feel like no one's gonna have their Acunas out though, because they're gonna be like, "Well, he'll go back up in January." <laughs> the normal freaking dealer excuse. Okay, they don't have the card can, out if you don't want to freaking sell can it. Can you even get a numbered, a colored numbered Chrome? In a 10 for under a grand. eBay, bro. I don't know. I have no idea. I'll have to do some research this week. I'm trying to think of things. I'm excited, though. I'm excited. Football's coming up. I'm excited to watch some Ohio State football. NBA preseason. Summer League had me kind of pumped for the new rookies. Kate Cunningham, Jalen Green are the real deal. Josh Giddy. Uh, Jalen Suggs. Josh, <laughs> Josh Giddy. Giddy up. Let's go. Jalen Suggs looks raw. He looks freaking good. Bro, I think Jalen Green's going to be the best one. Jalen Green is so freaking good. Is he the one for the Rockets? Yeah. He looked good. He's got swag, too. Yeah. He's got, like, that face of the league His type cards mentality. Those cards will do well, I have a feeling. Yeah. All right. That's going to wrap it up for this episode. Um, make sure you guys check out our social media platforms. My main one is going to be Nathan's.SportsCards on Instagram. Uh, check out TJ's. I don't remember all yours because you have a different username for every freaking account. You have. <laughs> 405 cards on IG, I think. Uh, TJ Cards three four on Twitter, and my main one is my Facebook group four hundred five, sports cards buy sell, buy, sell break, break trade trade, mystery packs yeah selling cards Whatever buying cards four hundred five sports cards or just message me on Facebook and I'll send you an invite yeah <laughs> and then Cooper's is C S dot sports cards on Instagram really all right but sounds good guys this will be probably up on YouTube and on Anchor and Spotify and wherever you listen to podcast here pretty soon so. We will catch y'all in the next one. Peace.